All right guys, today we're gonna to explain how to make instant gratification style effects on a MIDI controller of your choice. All you need is a controller that has some buttons and I'm gonna explain the basic principles that go behind doing these one push button effects um, and all the different commands that go behind that. Um, then we're gonna show a couple examples and then the next thing I'm gonna show is if you have a whole row of the same sort of instant effects like you might see uh, with a beat masher how you can do a little trick to make it so you can really play them more without it, uh, it turning off. And that might not make a little sense right now, but just follow along, it's gonna make sense and you may figure something out. So let's take a look. All right, so as mentioned, I'm explain how to make instant gratification style one push button effects and how to map those in Tractor. So in order to do that, there are a bunch of different commands that go behind each little button press. Um, and it might be a little bit more than you imagine. So basically you need to turn the effect on, you need to select what effect you want to be loading, you need to set the effects parameters, you need to set the effects dry wet, you need to set the effects unit routing, and you need to also um, set the effects mode to the appropriate one. So we're going to dive right into how to do that and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that on a MIDI Fighter 3D. You can do this, of course, with any MIDI controller of your liking, as long as it has buttons, um, and the tutorial should work just the same. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to use these three buttons here at first to make some instant gratification style uh, effects, and I'm going to do those in Effects Unit 3. And so, as I was just mentioning, some of the first steps you need to do is to turn the effect on, and note that this unit on is for a single effect, Otherwise, you're going to be using these buttons. So I want to keep it as a group effect. So I'm going to go with button one on effects three and use it with this button. And you can see that's already working. It's holding. Now I want to say um, select select a certain effect. Do that. Button. Let's pick. Um, Let's pick like a tape delay, sure. Why not? Uh, then let's, oops, sorry, that's a duplicate button. Then let's turn um, the parameters on. So we'll go with knob one. Press that, got a button. And let's say I want to do it to point six. Sure, and then now let's set the dry wet of the effects. Also on three. Let's do a little more aggressive, like 0.8. Then we want to um, route the unit on, which is kind of these guys down here. These are the effects units. And so I want to basically, when I press the button, it to turn the effects unit on to deck A and off all the other decks. And the reason that is because if I'm playing a deck and different uh, or a track in a different deck, I don't really want the effects to go on um, another one if I say I had the effects unit routed on and I didn't realize it. This is a way of making it consistent. So in order to do that, go to the mixer, I'm gonna say effects unit three on, oops, and I'm gonna say on A, like this guy. So you might be tempted to use the hold, and while that does more or less work, um, you'll find that if you have tempo-based effects, if you're turning the effects unit on and the effect on at the same time with the same button, there will be a very slight delay in how that gets affected to the track, and that can make um, any effect that is uh, dependent on tempo sound a little bit off. So the way I get around that is you make this a direct command and turn it on, and then as a result, you also have to turn that effects unit off any other decks you're not wanting to um, affect. So in this case, I'll take B, I'll turn it off. So let's see, let's pretend I had this guy playing, I had this guy on because I was using it, and then I want to use it on A. Now, as soon as I press it, it turns it on A and off of B. So that's exactly what we want. Uh, if you have a four deck mapping, you're going to want to um, add C and D and turn them off here too, but for this I'm just going to assume we're going to be doing two decks, um, but that's just something to be mindful of. 
So one of the only other things we need to be doing is also, since I want to be using this as a group effect, I want to make sure that in case it gets turned into a single effect, it goes back into a group. So go into effects unit, effects unit mode selector, do that, three, go to the button, go to direct, and then set it to a group. And then now it should pretty much be working. So let's say I'll just play the track. All right, so you can hear my delay going on. Cool. So that's pretty much how you do it for one button. Now I'm going to do it for a couple more. Um, and then we're going to explain how I'm going to use this next row down to do uh, the same style of instant gratification effect, but I'm going to do it all one effect. So in this case, I'll do it with the beat masher and then show you a little trick so you can uh, be playing them in a musical way without the effect turning off. So let's check that out. Uh, skip forward a little bit and I made a couple more instant gratification style effects here and then made this a whole row of beat mashers. So a real quick example. So we had our tape delay, and there a, a flange, and a reverb, very cool, all made the exact same style. And then we have beat masher. So that's great. This is kind of the foundation of an instant gratification style mapping and very similar to the original one. Um, so now I want to segue into the next part, which is important. If you have these, a whole row of the same style of effect like I do here as a beat masher, you'll see that you know it works great if you're pressing one at a time, but if you want to play them as a hand, it might turn off in an unexpected way. And the reason that is, is if you look over here, we have our button one command on effects unit one, which is where the beat masher is coming from. They're all on these button hold commands. So Basically, if I'm pressing one, it's turning on, and I release, it turns off, and that's great. But if I want to be kind of playing with different values, as soon as I release, say I'm holding two at the same time, as soon as I release one button, the effect turns off. And that's not going to be exactly what you want. You're going to want it to be when you release the last button for the effect to turn off. So let me show you an example. So I'm playing. So that's cool, but I want to go. So then I released it, and then that's not what I... So how we get around that is a little trick I made up, and there are a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm going to use a modifier basically to track how many buttons you're holding down and then to tell that button one command that, hey, don't turn yourself off unless um, there's only one button being held down. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to add a modifier, anyone works. I'm just going to go with two. I think that's what I used in the actual gratification mapping. Um, and I'm just going to learn these buttons. So I'm going to go with this guy here. Let's say it's a button. And I'm going to tell it to increment. Uh, at the same time, I want to pick the same button again and pick it to decrement. But here's the important part. I want it to be on the invert. And that means when you release the button. So if we take a look right now at M2, you can see when I press this, it turns to 1. When I release it, it goes to 0. So I'm going to repeat this three more times for all the other buttons. And let's learn that and do that real quick. Oops. And now they all should be doing that. So basically it's saying that M2 should be able to track how many buttons I'm pressing. So if I press this one, then it goes up, and then I can go all the way up to four. But as soon as I release one, it goes down. So that's telling me exactly how many buttons I'm pressing at any time. And the reason this is going to be useful, because now that we have this, I can go back to our uh, button command, which is turning the effect on, and say, I want you only to work when M2 is zero. And then the other case will be um, if M2 is one, because basically I want it to turn on or off, you know, if you're not holding any or if you're pressing one. 
So you are going to have to have a couple extra commands here, but it makes it a lot better. So um, see, in this case, if I just did M20, then right now M21 is not going to turn off. It's going to stay on, and that's not what we want. So let me add the other one in. It's just a duplicate of the existing one. And now it turns on and off like we expect, which is great. So all the other ones, I'm going to add in M2. And I'm going to make a duplicate of each, which um, And this will be one, that'll be one, and that will be one. So now you see they all turn on on their on their own. And if I go back and I'm side I wanna I can press multiple ones and release, and it's all good. So that's how that works. And that can be really helpful because if you do have an effect that you want to lay across multiple buttons, you are going to want to kind of play it and go back and forth kind of like a piano style. And you don't really want to be thinking about, oh, if I'm only pressing one button at a time. All right, so I just showed you how to make an instant gratification style one push button effect in Tractor and explain how to map them um, with all the commands to go behind making a one push button, a very smooth and consistent process. Uh, there are a lot of things to go behind that, like setting the effects parameters, the effects dry wet, the effect on, uh, routing the effects unit on certain decks and off others, setting the effects mode to be the appropriate one, and selecting the right effect you want. Uh, we also showed how to, if you have a whole row of instant gratification style effects, it's the same thing like a beat masher, how to use a modifier trick to basically allow you to be pushing multiple buttons at the same time and playing them kind of musically um, and not have it turn off when you release one of the fingers. So hopefully that's really helpful and it's going to allow you to either create your own instant gratification style mapping or customize an existing one that you really like and wanted to make some tweaks to or just take this to your own sort of uh, mapping or whatever. Uh, even though I was showing the MIDI Fighter 3D, you know, you can take these concepts to anything really that uh, has buttons and you want to make this sort of mapping with. So hopefully you learn a little something and uh, can use it to your advantage in your next DJ mapping adventure. Well, if you have any comments or questions on any of this stuff or future things you'd like to hear about, please just post them here um, in your comments or responses or just contact me somehow and I'll get to it as soon as I can. But until then, Flash Flutter signing off and I'll see you on the internet. Bye-bye.